Hello and welcome to A Word for This Day podcast. I'm Jory Schaefer, the show's host and creator, and it is my joy and pleasure to welcome you today. Welcome to anyone who's found us for the first time. It is no accident that you're here today, friend, so please don't run off quite yet. Please stick around for a bit, and let's see what the Lord has for us today. And welcome back to all you regular listeners. Thank you for coming back another day. I love uh, being on this journey with every one of you, even though I don't know who all of you are. God knows, and so I'm just thankful that we can think about His Word together. I want you to know that I do continue to pray for all of you, even though I don't know who you are. I continue to pray that God would draw you closer to Him and give you more of a desire to know Him and to know His Word, and that you will be very intentional about your time spent with Him. Friend, the world will tell you you are too busy. The devil will tell you you are too busy. He will try to distract with busyness and things. And uh, we must uh, be disciplined and say, no, I'm going to put God first. I'm going to um, carve out that time in my schedule. And I'll tell you, of all the things that uh, we can do as a believer to try to help us focus on Him, um, most of us cannot do that all in one sitting. We have to do it throughout the day. But what a blessing it is to do that, because that focuses our hearts and minds back on Him. Um, you know, we were talking in Bible study. We often say this on in that little Bible study group that I'm in, that um We'll start out on, in the morning and think, oh, we're doing great until we uh, talk to the first person in our house or we get out of our closet or we get up out of bed and then, um, you know, we may stumble in some way or the other. And so um, it takes that um, that concentrated effort to focus our hearts and minds back on him, to deny ourselves daily pick up our cross, and follow Him. And so may we do that. Be intentional. Make appointments with Him, just like you make uh, appointments for the other things that are important in your life. Uh, Please consider uh, sharing this podcast with your friends, family, neighbors, strangers, just anyone you think may receive a blessing from it. And know that I truly love to hear from you. So if you feel so led, send me a message sometime. Well, our verse for the day for November the 7th, 2024, comes from the Old Testament. It's Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 7, and it reads as follows from the Legacy Standard Bible. But your own eyes have seen all the great work of Yahweh, which he did. Oh, friends, there is a lot here, and uh, we're going to park here and see who was talking to whom was he talking, what was he talking about, but also to be reminded that we are able to see the things that God has done for us, Um, and we can ask him to open our eyes that we could uh, see that more, that we will pay attention to more of that. I mean, uh, Scripture says the heavens declare the glory of God. The skies display His handiwork. We can see that. We can see what He has done. We can know of Him based on His creation, as we read in Romans 1. We can see what He has done in our lives, in our in the provision, uh, in the protection that He has done. May we not take those things for granted. Um, but I I'm excited for us to park here and see um, what was going on. Now, we are in the Old Testament. We are in the law. Um, Those first five books of the Old Testament are called the law, and those are Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. After that, the section that we get into is called the Old Testament history section. Then there's the wisdom and poetry section. And then we get into the prophets, the major prophets and the minor prophets. The book that we're in today is the last of the five books of the law. And uh, it was all of these, uh, we believe, are written or were written by Moses. God gave him the words to write down. And 
There's nowhere within these where Moses says, I, Moses, wrote these down. But there are places within the scripture where we read that God told Moses to write these things down. Uh, Thirty-one uh, Deuteronomy 31, 9 has that, that uh, God, the Lord God gave uh, Moses the words to write down and to give to the Levites. But then also Jesus tells us that Moses wrote these things because when he was talking uh, to the Pharisees as they were accusing him on one of the many times that they challenged him and accused him. Um, he told them, he said, if you believed Moses, uh, in other words, the writings of Moses, you would believe me because he wrote of me. So Jesus tells us that Moses was the one who penned these words. And I just love that. Now, um, I suspect um, that but because um, some of the things that Moses wrote of were hundreds of years before he came along. But I suspect those times that Moses spent with uh, the Lord God uh, alone, you know, there were several episodes of 40 days and 40 nights when Moses would be alone with God. I suspect God gave him those words to write down and told him uh, how to write it and what to write and what to say. We read that all scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, correction, reproof, and training in righteousness that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. And we know that, um, Men, no prophecy or no truth telling uh, was given by men except that they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. And so we read that in Second Peter one twenty one. Um, <clears throat> so God's Holy Spirit and God the Father uh, gave these words to Moses to write them. That first book of the law, Genesis, um, is the origins book. It. it means in the beginning. And so we read uh, the story of the beginning of uh, life on earth and the creation of the earth and the planets in the universe. And we read about the creation of the first people. Then we read about the first sin. And then we read about how people had uh, become so evil and so sinful and turned away from God and how he started over. He destroyed the earth except for eight people with a worldwide flood. And uh, then we read how those people had trouble. And um, God chose uh, a man named Abram that he later, later called Abraham. And he uh, told him that through him, all the nations of the earth would be blessed. And Abraham believed what God said, and he credited credited it to him as righteousness. And we read about Abraham's descendants. And Abraham had Isaac, Isaac had Jacob. Jacob's other name was Israel. He had 12 sons. Those sons became the heads of the 12 tribes of Israel. And uh, Jacob and his sons went to Egypt, 70 persons. And over a period of about 400 years, they grew up to over um, 600,000 men on foot. And it was thought that there was about two to two and a half million people total. And um, they were oppressed in Egypt and they cried out to God and God heard their cry. And that's what we hear about in Exodus. Um, God sent Moses to be the one who would lead this large group out. Um, and just as he had told Abraham all the way back in Genesis, I believe it's in around uh, chapter 15, when he told him, told him, he made that covenant with Abraham and he told him what would happen to his descendants. And um, then in Leviticus, that is the law, and it talks more about the Levitical priesthood and the law that God gave to Moses on the mountain. We read more about uh, the details of that. Numbers is the book that follows uh, Leviticus, and it tells us more of the time and the wilderness. And then we get to this book of Deuteronomy. And what Deuteronomy is, is a series of farewell addresses that Moses gave to the people as they were getting ready to cross over into the promised land. God had promised this land to Abraham over 400 years before. Um, he told him, as I, as I just mentioned, what would happen to the people um, and that they would uh, go to a place that was not their own and then they would come out. Uh, with many possessions, and that's exactly what we read about in Exodus. Um, and it should have been just a, about a two-week journey 
from Egypt to this promised land. But the people grumbled. They um, were fussy. They didn't acknowledge what God had done. And he could have wiped them all out uh, for their grumbling. And there's a uh, sometimes in there, and we're going to talk about that today, where he was about to do it, um, but he relented. Uh, Moses pleaded with him, um, and he did not destroy them all. But all the ones that were 20 and above when they came out of Egypt because they had grumbled, except for Joshua and Caleb, um, all of them were um, sentenced to die in the wilderness over that period of 40 years. And so um, Moses is giving these addresses to the people who were under 20 years of age when they came out of uh, Egypt, when they were led out um, by God's mighty hand and outstretched arm, and also the children that were born uh, during those 40 years. And so that is who Moses is talking to within uh, this address here. And he, Moses, is not going to be allowed to go into the promised land because of an episode of disobedience that he had. And uh, the consequences of that was God told him that he wouldn't lead the people across into the promised land, that he would die before that, but Joshua would lead the people over. And so Moses is wanting to make sure he so cared for this people. I mean, God had entrusted him with these people. He had led them. He had taught them. He had interceded for them. And um, he wanted to make sure that they uh, remembered what God had said all through in these 40 years. He wanted to make sure that they were reminded to follow the rules and the statutes and the law that God had graciously given. He wanted them to remember what God had done for them in the wilderness and uh, how he protected and provided. And that's very much what we see in these pages of Deuteronomy. And so um, Moses opens it up, the book of uh, Deuteronomy in this way. He says, these are the words which Moses spoke to all Israel across the Jordan in the wilderness in the Arabah opposite Suf between Paran and Tophel and Laban and Hazaroth and Dizahab. It is 11 days journey from Horeb by the way of Mount Seir to Kadesh Barnea. Now it happened in the 40th year on the first day of the 11th month, Moses spoke to the children of Israel according to all that Yahweh had, had commanded him to give them after he had struck down Sihon, the king of the Amorites who lived in Heshbon and Og, the king of Bashan who lived in Ashtaroth. And Edri. So it tells us right here at the beginning of Deuteronomy, this is that last year, this is the 40th year, and Moses is reminding them of what God has done. And so he goes through in a very stepwise progression, and he says the same things over a lot, uh, over and over again, much like we tell people that we love, whether it's our children or some uh, someone else, before they're getting ready to depart or go on a journey, don't forget this, don't forget to take this, now when you get there, do this. Um, please don't forget this, you know, and we do that over and over. That's exactly what Moses was doing to hear for the children of Israel. And uh, he goes back and is giving them some history. And uh, back in chapter 9, he starts to remind them how they and the forefathers, especially they're the ones, the older ones, had provoked Yahweh to anger uh, when God had um, called Moses up on the mountain and, and had first written by his finger, by God's finger, on the tablets of stone. And um, this was the Ten Commandments, and that God was giving him uh, the rest of the law to give to the people. And in that short time that Moses was up there, those 40 days, uh, they had already turned away to idols. And Aaron, Moses' brother, who was... Um, tapped to be the spokesperson because Moses didn't think he could. <laughs> and it, I would encourage you to go back and read about that in uh, Exodus chapters 3 and 4. And God didn't let Moses off the hook. Uh, he still had called him to be the leader, and that's what he was supposed to do. But he told him that my Aaron could be a spokesperson. But um, anyway, God had given Moses these tablets of stone. He went down. Uh, God told him that the people had turned away from uh, him and 
when Moses saw it, he threw those tablets of stone down on the ground and they shattered. And he um, was on his face before God another 40 days and 40 nights, it says, uh, because he was afraid for what God was going to do to those people. And God had even said, "I'll, I'll just wipe them out and I'll start over with you. But Moses pleaded with God on behalf of the people. And you can read about that in Deuteronomy chapter 9 and then we see in chapter 10 that God uh, told Moses to come up again and to cut two more stone tablets and God wrote the the law that he'd written before those 10 commandments on those tablets of stone one more time and Moses is telling the people that he came down again uh, with those tablets he says um in chapter 10, verse 4, and he wrote on the tablets that he is God. This is Moses talking to the people. Like the former writing, the Ten Commandments, which Yahweh had spoken to you on the mountain from the midst of the fire on the day of the assembly, and Yahweh gave them to me. Then I turned and came down from the mountain and put the tablets in the ark, which I had made, and there they are, as Yahweh commanded me. And then um, it says here in verse 12 of chapter 10, and I just wanted you to hear this as so you'll have that context as we get into 11. It says, so now, Israel, what does Yahweh your God ask from you but to fear Yahweh your God, to walk in all his ways and love him and to serve Yahweh your God with all your heart and with all your soul and to keep the commandments of Yahweh and his statutes, which I'm commanding you today for your good. Behold, to Yahweh your God belong heaven and the highest heavens, the earth and all that is in it. Yet on your fathers did Yahweh set his affection to love them, and he chose their seed after them, even you above all peoples as it it is this day. So circumcise your heart and stiffen your neck no longer. For Yahweh your God is the God of gods and the Lord of lords, the great and mighty and the fearsome God who does not show partiality nor take a bribe. He executes justice for the orphan and the widow and shows love for the sojourner by giving him food and clothing. So show love for the sojourner, for you were sojourners in the land of Egypt. Yahweh your God you shall fear, him you shall serve, and to him you shall cling and by his name you shall swear he is your praise and he is your god who has done these great and fearsome things for which your eyes have seen your fathers went down to egypt 70 persons in all and now yahweh your god has made you as numerous as the stars of heaven you shall therefore love yahweh your god and keep his charge his statutes his judgments and his commandments all your days So know this day that I'm not speaking with your sons who have not known, who have not seen the discipline of Yahweh your God, his greatness, his strong hand and his outstretched arm and his signs and his works, which he did in the midst of Egypt to Pharaoh, the king of Egypt and all his land. And what he did to Egypt's army, to its horses and its chariots, when he made the water of the Red Sea to engulf them while they were pursuing you and Yahweh made them perish utterly. And what he did to you in the wilderness until you came to this place and what he did to Dathan and Abiram the sons of Eliab the son of Reuben when the earth opened its mouth and swallowed them their households their tents and everything that followed them among all Israel and here's our verse but your own eyes have seen all the great work of Yahweh which he did he's reminding the ones who are listening and I suspect these would be the ones that were under 20 when they came out because at this point just about all the others had died that was their sentence um, because they had grumbled against him but he's like you saw this I'm not talking to the ones who have already passed away the older ones I'm talking to you you have seen what has happened and so he's saying your eyes have seen all the great work of Yahweh which he did and uh, very much wanted them to remember that and to pay attention and to not forget it. You know, God talks to us all the way through scripture about uh, remember, recall to mind, don't forget. He knows we are a forgetful people. Moses knew his, uh, those children of Israel were a forgetful people, and that's why he wanted to uh, reinforce this, I believe. 
And look at what he did. He went back and spoke all the way about the things or or brought to mind the things that happened um, at the time of the Exodus and then the things that happened during those times that they were in or during the time that they were in the wilderness. Um, You know, three and four is talking about the signs and works which he did in Egypt and to Pharaoh. And then um, when the people were leaving Egypt and they were... um, pursued by Pharaoh's army, and then God opened up that sea so that they could pass through on dry land, and then God took care of that, uh, of Pharaoh's army and army and engulfed them, and then reminding them how God had taken care of them in the wilderness, how he provided, um, or um, he doesn't say it in this sentence, but he said it in other places, how God provided their daily bread, their manna, and he provided meat in the form of quail, and it was there every day that manna was, um, except on the Sabbath day because they were supposed to get two portions the day before because there would not be, uh, they were not supposed to gather on the Sabbath day. And they were not supposed to gather too much. They were not supposed to gather too little. They were supposed to get just what they needed. And they saw for 40 years that God provided that. So even if some of these people were uh, little little bitty children, you know, two or three or four when they uh, left Egypt, they would have grown up seeing that. They would have seen that pillar of cloud by day and the fire by night that that led them where they were supposed to go. And when that parked uh, or stayed stationary in a spot, they knew that they stayed. And then when it picked up, they followed that. They would have seen those signs and wonders. They would have seen how God took care of them. And then many of those would have seen in this story about Dathan and Abiram, those who had kind of... um, Even though the Lord had said, you know, the Levites are the ones who are going to take care of the things to do with the temple from that tribe of Levi. They're the ones that I'm setting apart uh, to take care of the temple and the tabernacle. But some of Reuben's uh, descendants said, no, we can do that same thing. And they uh, were doing what God had told them not to do. And the the nation of Israel, God had told Moses, and I'm paraphrasing this a little bit. It's in Numbers. I'll put the reference. But he had told them that um, to, to gather all the people and to stand there so they could see what happened. And God sw- opened up the earth and swallowed Dathan and Abiram and all their families because they had been disobedient. So that would have been, I think, very clear in their mind. And Moses is saying this to those to whom he's speaking. He's like, your eyes have seen all the great work that of Yahweh, which he did. He's like, don't forget it. And what a blessing that he would allow them to see that. You know, uh, sometimes we... Um, A lot of times on this side of the cross, we are encouraged to walk by faith and not by sight. God graciously gave them uh, so many signs and wonders. And, you know, sometimes we'll think, well, why don't we get to see those things uh, like they did? But we do still get to see other things, just like we talked about. Was it yesterday when we were talking about uh, when John the Baptist sent his disciples to Uh, the Lord Jesus to say, are you the one to come? And Jesus uh, sent the message back by quoting um, a couple of passages from Isaiah that the blind received sight and the dead were raised and the lame could walk and the lepers were cleansed and the poor had the gospel preached to them, all those different things. And sometimes we'll think, wow, I wish I could see that. But friends, as we talked about yesterday, he does miracles in our lives in the lives of those who choose to believe day after day after day. He takes our old um, sinful hearts if we believe in him and puts his Holy Spirit within, within us and changes our desires, changes our thought processes because he loves us so. We are taken from that old man to the new man. Um, we do get to see the works that he has done. Our eyes do get to see the great work of Yahweh, like we talked about at the very beginning of this podcast, when we look at creation, when we look at um, how God creates 
all the things that we have in nature, how he creates people. I mean, those are miracles. Some of us get to see medical miracles or other miracles or miracles of provision, um, miracles of deliverance, miracles of just how God works mightily in a situation um, that no human could have figured it out that way because it doesn't go by human uh, thoughts and human wisdom and all of that. So um, just like he told Uh, like Moses was reminding his people to really pay attention um, because you have seen, your eyes have seen all the great work of Yahweh, which he did, and their lives are an example of what happened to them, serves an example for us. We should be able to see some of those things as well. And may we not put the, the Lord to the test and say, show me this to prove who you are. No, we can see it. He has graciously shown us. He has graciously given us his word. He has graciously given us his Holy Spirit. He has graciously given us the testimony of other believers. We can see it in others' lives. We can see it in our lives. And so may we ask him, if you're feeling like you're having a hard time seeing that, Ask God to open your eyes to what he's doing, Um, and perhaps he will. I think if you come with a a heart truly seeking and not a heart testing or a, a rebellious heart, he's gracious. He loves his children. He shows us. He encourages us. He has promised us that he'd never leave us or forsake us, and I'm so thankful for that. Um, but I would encourage you to go on and read after that because the next verse, um, Moses is saying, so because of this, he says in, because your eyes have seen all these things that he has done, um, he says, you shall therefore keep every commandment, which I'm commanding you today so that you may be strong and go in and possess the land into which you're about to cross. He's like, keep these commandments, do obey what he has said. You've seen him work. You've seen his faithfulness. And so now walk in that, obey him. You know, his power, you've seen it. Don't forget it. And friends, may that be the same for us. May we not forget it. May we um, trust him all the more because we've seen what he's done in his word and in in the lives of others. And um, may he receive all the glory for that. Blessings to you, friends. Until next time.